for watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Susan Tran in for Thasmeen Mahfouz tonight. A group of Virginia lawmakers, they are moving forward with a plan that could drastically change the landscape of pro sports in the DMV. According to the Washington Post, a commission of legislators has approved a plan that would move the NBA Wizards as well as the NHA Capitals from the district to Alexandria. Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcilla joining us live in the Potomac Yard neighborhood. And Max, of course, there's a long way to go, but the stakes of this decision, boy, they are enormous. Yeah. That's right, and not only are the stakes huge here in Northern Virginia in this rapidly growing and expanding neighborhood, it's also really important what happens in Chinatown in that downtown DC neighborhood. Of course, we are still a ways away from any formal decision, but tonight we are taking a look at what is remaining and how people here are reacting. Washington Wizards and Capitals fans have called the district home for decades. Now, a change is being threatened. According to the Washington Post, a group of Virginia lawmakers has approved a plan to bring a massive development to the Potomac Yard neighborhood of Alexandria. It's being reported that development would include a home for the hoops and hockey teams, as well as a separate smaller concert venue. I think there's a reason the commanders have looked at Woodbridge and Loudoun, and there's a reason that Mr. Leonsis is looking for Potomac Yard now. Ted Leonsis owns Monumental Sports and Entertainment, which owns the two teams. He reportedly is seeking $600 million from D.C. to improve the team's current home, Capital One Arena. But Virginia could offer an alternative, breathing new life into an area with serious momentum already. Potomac Yard is near the new Amazon headquarters in Arlington, and it just opened a new Metro stop earlier this year. I think if they take it here, it would take money and culture away from the city. I think they need the rejuvenation. The debate about whether the team should move can continue. D.C.'s Mayor Muriel Bowser weighed in, saying she and Chairman Phil Mendelson have worked together closely and in lockstep to put forward a strong proposal to Monumental Sports, and she said they are committed to seeing this through as a vital component of D.C.'s comeback. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin declining comment on the massive project that, if it happens, would bring a pro sports team to the Commonwealth for the first time. A lot still has to happen before a puck drop or tip off here in Potomac Yard. First thing, reportedly, it would have to go through the entire General Assembly, which reconvenes at the beginning of next year. Then it would have to go through the Alexandria City Council. But if those two things happen, both go through, the governor signs it, then that deal would get brought to Monumental and to Leonsis. And the question then is, will they move those two teams across the Potomac? Reporting in Alexandria, Max Marcella, DC News Now. Max, thank you. Meanwhile, turning down to weather just like that, the first snowfall of the season. It has come and gone. Take a look here. This is some of that early morning snow in northwest DC. Today it looked pretty, didn't it? Many school districts across the DMV actually had two hour delays today. It looks beautiful, it but you got to be reminded that the roads might look clear now, but you'll want to be careful if you're driving tomorrow morning. Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb is here, and Janessa, there are warnings about potential possibility for black ice in the morning commute. Yeah, we've had a good amount of moisture fall on the roadways, and you know, yesterday I wasn't concerned yesterday night because you had temperatures about 60 degrees in the upper atmosphere, and tonight, uh, really at the surface, we're going to be below 32, and so that will create that black ice with the wet conditions that we've been dealing with uh, just in the last 12 to 24 hours. And so really at the surface, it can be very sneaky as you're driving for your early morning commute. That uh, layer kind of uh, freezes over and allows for a lot of slick spots. So please, you know, my warning is give yourself some extra time tomorrow morning. Visibility should be good. And you can see this is setting the tone under clear skies across uh, the DMV right now. We saw our first official snowfall here in DCA and Delta. Uh, BWI only seeing a trace of snow. So really most locations well to our west picking up an inch. We had a few areas of western Maryland up to three inches of that heavy duty snow. Uh, so it looked quite pretty uh, this morning, but all of that has pretty much melted. If you're across Fairfax County, DC Metro, still Kaiser into Cumberland saw a good swath two to four inches. And so they have a good snowpack uh, that is currently on the ground. Wind chills are going to make a difference with that black ice uh, form. Uh, 
morning. It's really starting to pick up now our wind flow up to 15 to 25 miles per hour. So our feel like temperature in most locations from Leesburg to Frederick uh, back into the middle 20s. Overnight lows uh, feel like temperature on your skin back in the teens and 20s. So a very chilly Tuesday morning, but a good amount of sunshine across uh, the region. I have your full extended forecast coming up. All right, the latest now on the war in the Middle East. Israel's ground offensive is intensifying in Gaza, and Israel's government says they're prepared to fight for months, even longer, to defeat Hamas. Back home today, more than a dozen Jewish protesters calling for a permanent ceasefire chained themselves here to the White House fence. It led to several being cited. A demonstration was organized by the group Jewish Voice for Peace. Protesters came from Washington, New York City, and California. I'm here because um, four years ago to the day I was, uh, four years ago to the day I was born, the last death march left Auschwitz. I was born here in Washington, D.C. at GW Hospital. It's unbearable to me that there's another genocide happening right now in my name, and I'm doing everything I can to stop it. And earlier today, U.S. Capitol Police arrested more than 40 protesters who entered the Hart Senate office building demanding a ceasefire as well. U.S. Capitol Police saying the group was illegally protesting in the congressional space. The group was arrested for crowding and obstruction. Police say one person climbed the statue in the atrium and was taken into custody for resisting arrest. Happening tomorrow, the Prince William County Board of Supervisors is scheduled to vote on the controversial Digital Gateway Project. The plan would rezone areas to accommodate dozens of data centers. Now, last week, the county's planning and zoning staff recommended to the board denying that project, but the majority of the board members have expressed support for it. And then last month, the board approved the Devlin Technology Park Data Center in a 5-3 to three vote. In Arlington County, school officials are warning students to be on alert. Police say a woman in a black Subaru tried to lure a student who was waiting to be picked up over at Williamsburg Middle School. This was on Friday. The woman apparently told the child she was sent by the student's parent to pick them up. The student declined and the woman apparently drove away. If you have any information on what happened, you are urged to contact police. In the district, an alarming number of children are chronically absent last year. We're talking 43% of these students have missed 10% of school days. And that number is slightly down from the year before, but still historically high compared to pre-pandemic uh, pre years. The loss of learning can have really huge impacts on a student's future. Our Marielle Carbone has more from tonight in downtown. Advocates are calling chronic absenteeism a crisis, and it's something they say can severely impact our kids later in life. That is why they are calling on something to be done to address this issue, but parents say it's not so cut and dry. D.C. has some of the highest chronic absenteeism rates in the country. And that's a concern for Jessica Giles with Education Reform Now. When students attend school consistently, they're more likely to graduate, go on to get and hold great jobs. Mm -hmm. So this has a direct connection to our students' future. According to data from the Office of the State Superintendent of Education, 43% of D.C. students, or two in five, were chronically absent in the 2022-23 school year. And that means they miss 10% of their school days, excused and unexcused. It's down slightly from 48% the year prior. When it comes to chronic truancy, 37% of D.C. kids had at least 10 unexcused absences last year. It's still unacceptably high. Giles says there are steps the district can take, like a nudge notification. Letting families know, like, hey, your child has mixed this number of days. Aussie says chronic absenteeism is a top priority and the agency is expanding trainings and supports provided to schools that promote mental health and wellness for students and staff, among other things. It's not so cut and dry out there. Still parents like LaJoy Johnson Law say the issues aren't black and white. My experience is, has been if she's absent, then we're at the doctor. Her daughter, a seventh grade student with disabilities, is considered chronically absent. She says there are many factors that can cause a student to show up late or not at all. Kiddos are literally like crossing the city to go to school. Me and my child, we travel from Ward 8 to Ward 1. And if you're in traffic, that could be like an hour. And council will hold a hearing on the issues tomorrow. That's at 1130. Reporting downtown, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now.